بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to the Black Banners podcast. Now this is the second episode and today we are diving into the story of Abdul Karim Khattabi who was a Moroccan resistance fighter who fought against the French and the Spanish after the end of World War I and the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Abdul Karim Khattabi was born in Ajdir, Morocco in 1882 and for his entire life his land was occupied by Europeans. It was divided into the modern day border of Western Sahara, Morocco, which was actually all part of the Moroccan Sultanate, but at that point was divided between the French and the Spanish. For his entire childhood, all him and his family knew were occupation. The occupiers treated them like second class citizens. They divided people uh, by worth and they treated people differently. He was enraged. How could he not get his f fair human rights and privileges on his own land that his ancestors cultivated and grew? And he started gathering men and he began a resistance against the Spanish. He started capturing bases and he started capturing the weapons in these bases. He actually started off, I don't know the exact number, but I believe it was 10 guns that they started off with and around 150 men. And from there they expanded and expanded. And at one point, at, at one point in the war, they allegedly had 30,000 men. I don't think that's true. I believe it was around 12,000. I think that number is a little inflated. Anyways, Abdul Karim Khattabi started uh, the Reef War in 1920, and actually he was involved in warfare before that. He fought for the Ottomans after World War One ended and the Ottoman Empire collapsed. Abdul Karim Khattabi was back in occupied Morocco, and he actually established territory, and he called his territory the Reef Republic, and he. Uh, basically announced himself as the president of the Rifians and actually a British House of Commons member uh, said that he had the potential to be the next caliphate. Now uh, you'd think this is a compliment and I guess you could say it is but it's also a threat. Europe did not want a next caliphate. They didn't want a next anything. They uh, defeated the Ottoman Empire and anybody else who has the potential to be a portion of what the Ottoman Empire were uh, was terrifying for the Europeans. They had to muffle it immediately. And so the Spanish began an attack on the reef. 60,000 men were sent in with General Silvestre. This man was very cocky. Abdul Karim Khattabi gave him a warning. He told him, if you cross the river, I am going to massacre you and your men. I am going to take this as a call of war. And Silvestre said, I am going to come and wipe my feet on Spanish territory. Now, of course, he is referring to the Reef here. He is referring to Abdul Karim Khattabi's land, and he is disrespecting him and delegitimizing his claim to the land. Now, the Spanish obviously thought this was going to be light work. They thought they were just going to capture Abdul Karim Khattabi and destroy any sort of resistance. That's not what happened, as you can probably guess. And <laughs> I guess that could be my slogan for this show to be, for this podcast, excuse me. They were, well, first of all, they were ambushed a few times. And these ambushed actually caused heavy losses. But Silvestre didn't exactly realize it right away. They were getting ambushed... Uh, miscellaneous bases were getting raided and they were losing hundreds of men at a time it was kind of confusing for the troops because they were also drunk as hell yeah they did not think much of the reefians actually they didn't even think that this would be a real fight so they were drunk as hell uh per usual and when they woke up in the morning they had a delightful surprise Silvestre tried to call a tree because they had taken uh, heavier losses than they thought to Abdul Karim Khattabi and his men. But his uh, Silvestre's men, the Spanish, weren't exactly prepared. They were halfway between a retreat and halfway between their camp, and everybody was walking around completely muddled and confused as to what to do. And that is when Abdul Karim Khattabi and his men came out the mountains and completely annihilated them. They attacked from all sides. And out of the 23,000 men, 
23,000 Spanish who were present, 13,363 were killed in the moment, killed in the initial attack, 18,000 were killed over the next few days. And this was in other random attacks as they were trying to retreat. The Spanish were moving north back up to their bases. Um, by the way, I want to talk about these bases. The Spanish have been occupying these two port cities in Morocco. And they've actually been occupying it for 500 continuous years. Five, zero, zero. 500 years the Spanish had, have had settlements in Morocco. And they still hold it to this day in two cities called Melilla and Queta. Uh, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And they still occupy to this day, interestingly enough. Uh, now, Abdul Karim Khattabi was following them north, attacking them, and they suffered many more heavy losses. Allegedly, only 600 men made it back to the base. 60,000 entered, 600 uh, escaped, and many more went missing and were captured. That was one of the most embarrassing defeats, I guess you can say, in colonial history. But let me tell you, let me tell you what happened to Silvestre. I don't want to forget about our little friend. He ended up going to his tent because this was not, this was not the first time he was embarrassed. They were ambushed multiple times. They were taking heavy losses uh, to the Rifians. Abd al-Karim al-Khattabi had proven him wrong multiple times. He just annihilated his entire force. Silvestre was, I guess you can say, devastated. He went to his tent and he ended up committing suicide in his tent from embarrassment. And that's the end of that guy's story. Now, Abd al-Karim Khattabi had established his, his country, the Reef Republic, and he started uh, a draft system that was basically allowing people to work for two weeks and fight in the military for two weeks men and women because they needed all the hands that they can get they started sending people Abdul Karim Khattabi started sending people to Europe to study he started uh, basically developing his country and his infrastructure and the Reef Republic actually started looking scary it started concerning the Europeans and they did not want a rise of another caliphate. They did not want another Ottoman Empire. And Abd al-Karim al-Khattabi had this potential in him. And it terrified them. They knew that if they were going to attack again, they couldn't come in the same way that they did the first time. They can't come in through the hills. Abd al-Karim al-Khattabi was the king of the hills. Uh, he knew how to avoid you and destroy you at the same time so they knew they had to try a different tactic now classic european tactic at this point in history was uh scorched earth completely destroy everything uh, until the enemy gets on his knees and begs you to stop and unfortunately they did that they started dropping mustard gas on the reef and they started killing people in clusters dropping mustard gas in highly populated areas the west obviously weren't exactly living up to their high moral standards clearly they didn't hold themselves accountable to their own morals they were dropping mustard bombs they started pulling up the Spanish fleet came and started bombarding coastal cities, like I said earlier. This was their style. They would uh, bomb the shit out of cities uh, until they crumble and everybody inside is either dead or almost dead. And they have no choice but to give up. And that is when they surrounded the reef with 250,000 troops. The Spanish had to come in through the north. The French were entering through the south. And they were uh, slowly capturing territory until... Uh, Abd al-Karim al-Khattabi only had around 500 men left and he was basically on his last leg. He had nothing left with him, but he still refused to surrender to the Spanish. He eventually surrendered to the French on May 26, 1926, after six years of combat. Uh, he was captured and he was moved to live in house arrest in a French colony somewhere in the south of Africa. He eventually escaped to Egypt, and Egypt refused to give him up to the French. He ends up actually influencing many other freedom fighters, such as Che Guevara. And he ends up meeting, I believe he ends up meeting Fidel Castro in Egypt. 
double check that that is something that i chose not to look into to be honest anyways he started gathering men in egypt yeah this man was old and he was still gathering men ready to come back and continue the fight for freedom but suddenly his plans were completely halted when the french and the spanish chose to pull out and leave a puppet monarchy behind it's basically a tactic to divide the people and conquer them from far away and they are doing that with multiple countries in the middle east actually egypt is still occupied to this day anyways uh, abdul karim khattabi ends up eventually dying in cairo in 1963 at the age of 81 and that unfortunately ties up his beautiful story that ended with a lot of lost potential this man uh in a different yani when it comes to these forgotten heroes a lot of them in a different setting they would have completely dominated the scene but they unfortunately came in tough times where they could not live up to their full potential and that's sad May Allah bless Abdul Karim Khattabi and everybody that was involved in the resistance. May Allah bless everybody who fought for the sake of Allah and for the Black Banner. And I think that's going to tie it up for the second episode of the Black Banner's podcast. I hope you have a beautiful evening, afternoon, morning, whatever it is for you. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.